Good day and welcome back. So this episode, I'm going to touch base on, essentially, we're, we're getting close to done. So I'm going to kind of talk about some of the challenges I had with the details, uh, some of the fitment, some seam work that needs to be done, things to watch, things to watch out for, you know, just calling that out. Um, I do go over the deck cord because that's kind of a thing on this on, on this plane. You know, the it's it's really unique. It's right right at the cockpit. It catches your eye, so it's it's kind of important to get that to look okay. Talk about the, the paint scheme, some challenges with the transfers, um, and then some thoughts about the ordnance load and things like that. So, you know, I could go ahead and yammer on about that, or we can go ahead and cut to it. So let's cut to that and see where we go. Well, we got this far. And for the most part, I'm pretty content. Um, the pieces are going together okay. I had some fill to do here. Um, I had to do a good bit of sanding and fitting to get these doors to close. I'm about to go ahead and do these doors and the rest of these. But before I get into that, I noticed something. So... I'm going to cut to a picture of the Harrier again, and I want you to look at this space. Right, so that is all smooth. So this here should be one smooth piece. Um, <laughs> okay. So why it was done, why they built this this way in that, so this was done, I don't get. So it's just something I've got to fix. So I will go ahead and get to that. And um, yeah, we'll do that part. We'll do these doors and then we're closing in on the end of the assembly, right? So I have the slats to do, which are here. These guys will go on late. Um, and then, then I think it's pylons. So, you know, a couple little, I've got to jump around, do a couple more pieces and then, then we've got to do painting, but I think we're, we're closing in on done. Um, so let me get the rest of the assembly. So again, my, my intent here is I'm going to get as much assembly as I can up to the point where it's time to paint and then I will paint and then do final assembly. Um, but yeah, before I do that, I've got to take care of that. So off to do that. It really isn't as big a deal as I made it out to be, but it still does need to be done. It needs to be cleaned up. So, you know, first, like always, just clean up the extra plastic. Then I go in and again, I use Bondo. Um, I'm really like the way it works and it's easy to work with. It sands out fairly well. So we just go in and we put it on and clean it up, you know, hit it with sandpaper and take it down. Then comes, you know, some of the fun part, and this is putting together the exhaust nozzles. So you've got to put in the veins. Now the veins are specific, they're side specific, well they're not side specific, they're, they're top and bottom specific for each of the, the exhaust nozzles. So you've got to get them in and they, they're too small, right? You know, they, the tolerances aren't really clean so when you put these together they don't necessarily touch both sides or if they do they're just touching so I end up using the um, the testers uh, or the, the contactor more than I do the quick set just because or the thin just because it it, it actually holds better right? it, it prevents it from moving around once that's done I went ahead and I shop the thing with the overall base paint. And I use this AK putty. It's the first time I'd ever used this stuff. Um, so when I went through and, and put this in, um, I was actually really impressed. It doesn't stick as much as like silly putty does, but the cool thing is, you know, it leaves absolutely no residue at all. So I went ahead and I, I use blue painter's tape for m major masking pieces anyway. It's cheap and you know, it actually comes off fairly well without pulling up paint. Um, so when I peel this stuff off, you can see I had the lighter color that I already shot it with, with the darker color. Now, yes, I know that these colors probably could be darker or different, but I was actually fairly content. There's spots that I missed, but I can go back and touch those up with a hairy brush. 
Um, also, I'll, I'll clean up a little bit of that line, but overall, that's that's what I was after. Um, with that done, we just go ahead and, and put in these pieces. Um, I called them slats. I'm really not sure. I keep forgetting what, they, what they're actually called, so my mistake, folks. Um, I'll probably look up what they're actually called and maybe put it in as a caption. Maybe not. Um, they're tight, though, right? So when they go in, they, they fit snug, uh, especially once you hit them with paint. But, you know, a quick shot of sandpaper, you get it in, they just click right in. Um, I don't think I ever did glue them. They just kind of go on. Then it's time to do the canopy detail. They're the like the deck cord for the canopy. So I got in this this deck cord, and when I went to look at it, it doesn't fit. And I, I'm going to try and slow down here, and you can kind of see that it doesn't fit where the canopy has the molded in deck cord location. So I've got a choice. I can sand that off inside the canopy because it is molded in. Or I can do something different. You know, I'm, I'm sitting here testing to see just how deep that molded in line is, and uh, sanding down in there is going to be a pain. So I chose something different. Taking a little bit of white paint and a hairy brush and a very, very patient. And now this is sped up to close to um, eight times. That's how how slow I'm painting this. And I apologize for the vacuum in the background. Um, but I just follow the mold line all the way around uh, with with white paint and hairy brush, and it ends up coming out of our right. Um, I tried to come here to get a better view, but then I realized my fingers are in the way, and uh, I apologize for that. But you know, basically just follow it on. It ended up not looking terrible, uh, and this is kind of what it looks like, and I'm content with that. Finally, uh, the the PE details, putting in the mirrors and the handles that go to the inside of the of the cockpit canopy um i get these done and i put them in i don't even know they're really necessary i mean you can kind of see them from from one or two of the angles and yeah they're they're good detail to have but um you almost don't see them right they're they're sort of they, they really hide in the in the angle of the of the canopy but they're there okay let's talk transfers um so I mentioned this before, and I will say it again. If I wanted to go with a style different than the one that was in the kit, I had to go get my own, or I had to go get a different set. Now, the only other set I could find, I found from Flying Leathernecks, and that's this. And those of you who are Harrier aficionados have probably already noticed the thing that I didn't until now. Um, and that this is the AV-8B Harrier 2, and this is the AV-8B2 Plus. I noticed it when I noticed the nose. And I was when I was and, and honestly, I only noticed that when I was starting to orient where the the transfers had to go and I'm like great um but with that said I still like the color scheme I still went with I still decided to go with what I had and I feel like like even my color scheme is bad because my color scheme is more like you know the darker color is more like this color than that color so those of you who are are hairy aficionados I apologize this whole this whole build or at least the paint job and everything is probably making me super squicky but I'm going with it because I like the look of it and I like this plane and uh, you know maybe in the future I'll grab a 148 scale where I can get um, I apologize for the noise my dog has decided she wants to play now upstairs so maybe at some point in the future I'll do start doing some 148 scale models um, and go with that but with that said I don't know of a 148 or a 132nd scale AV8B2 plus model. So I'm going to have to take a look and see where I can find it. Anyway, I got these. And I want to talk about just a couple things. So yes, I'm running with them. We're going to make it work. And, you know, we're going to go with go with what we have. Got these down. Um, one small issue I had, and, and I'll start with that. Um, yeah, I mentioned this before. <laughs> She's sore. Is, you know, I, I really like the look of that one, but I would have had to color match these, which is why I didn't. Um, 
so I like to look at that when I ran with it. I found that I'm having one heck of a problem with silvering. And, you know, this was like, it was really bad. Now, what I ended up doing, and again, some of you model makers are probably experts at doing this. I wasn't until today. Well, I would, I'm not even going to say I'm an expert. I got it to work. Basically, what I did is when I had it silvered, and it really would have helped me to have found this on the YouTube, and I didn't. So I, that's why I'm making a point to say it again. I took Mark Fit, um, so you, but you could use this. You could use your um, sole. You know, your, uh, here it is, Microset, Microsol. You could use these guys. Um, what I did is I painted them down over top of the transfer. Then I took my knife and I just pierced the decal. And I could literally see the mark bit flow underneath it and fix it. So, but then what I also saw is it also bubbled it up. So I had to go back and I had to take... Uh, cotton bud and roll it and press it down so I'm pretty much again most of you guys who are watching this probably know all of this already I didn't which is why I'm making a point to comment about it for the one or two people that maybe hadn't um the reason I mentioned that I don't know that it's these transfers that have had that would have given me that challenge or if any transfers would give me that challenge um, I didn't have that problem so much with these, which are the original ones. Now I do have to go back. These tore for different reasons. And I, I regret having opened the vents there for having to do those. Um, but I think the, the flying now that leather next transfers are a little bit different and they didn't want to lay down quite as much. They were really flimsy and very easy to tear. So I had to be really careful with them. They still work. They're still just fine. Um, but there's a little bit of special care needed. Second thing, I want to point out this. So if you look, they call out all these placards. I, I, don't, I can't even remember what the word is, but, you know, the, the temp, the, you know, the, all the no steps and all those little markings, right? They call them on this sheet. There's nowhere in here. They don't exist on the sheet they give you. Great. So they must be on the originals. Nope. There's one other sheet. There's another sheet. I'm trying to remember. Ah, here it is. Right here. Once I get my fingers to work. Nope. You have a couple a couple little ones. You've got, you know, some transfers for the cockpit, but there's no template decals or there's no whatever those I, and I'm gonna remember after I film this what, what the word is. The point is they're not in any of the transfer buckets. So guess what? I'm not going with them. Um, I'm not gonna even I mean they're light colored and I don't have if they were dark, I might be able to have, a, I might be able to print them, but they're light colored, so I'm not even going to bother to try. Um, overall, you know, it, it is what it is. And again, I already know that um, they've got the wrong color and the wrong markings and the wrong type of plane, so I'm going to kind of wing it. <laughs> uh, so, flying leather neck decals. These transfers are awesome. With the point that they are um, just slightly, they, they are for a different type of aircraft. And like I said, I didn't even know if there, I don't know if there is a Harrier AP2 Plus 132 scale. I will be obviously looking for one because maybe I will go do the other one. Right, that said, I had issues with the transfers, but I have fixed it. I have a few places where I had some problems with the original, so I can color match paint and I can paint up the details. I wish I had never done these, um, the open vents because putting that on was a bear. Uh, so now I'm at the point where I have some detail painting, minor little bits to do, and then I'm done.
Um, well, no, I'm not done. I'm, I have, so I have the, and then I start the fun part, which is the weathering. And there's a ton of that. Now, the, what I have seen of the Harrier is it is incredibly dirty. Um, a lot of oil and a lot of other stuff like that. And I apologize for that thing. I haven't been in there the whole time. Um, but there's a lot of stuff for for making this dirty and, and weathering this thing up. And that's where I'm going to go. Um, again, we're going to start with pin washes. And then we'll go with some oil streaks. And then, you know, the a bunch of discoloration on the nozzles and vents. And a lot of places here. You know, a lot of places underneath to to fix those. Oh, another thing. I'm frustrated with the missiles too. Again, same reason. Um, for the bombs, I'm I'm having to hand paint these things, but there's no there's no markings on these either. So there's you know I've I've gotten like my as much as I groused about the F14 from Tania, the missiles had all of the markings on them. You know, they had the transfers, they had all of the markings for the bombs and the ordnance. The, this does not, has nothing. So, you know, um, that may change how I do the ordnance. Again, it will depend on how I feel about the ordnance. I'm looking around at picking up some aftermarket. I really don't want to spend 50 bucks for one load of ordnance on a model, um, I like this model. I just don't know if I like it that much. I'm kind of thinking I might just put the the mount points for them and leave the leave the ordnance off it. Uh, I will put the drop tanks on. I might put the sidewinders on or the aim on, I guess. And uh, other than that, what I'm going to do though is I'm going to run through the pictures of the hairs that I see, like this one, right? Um, and and really kind of just go to town with that but that's what i'm going for uh but for now that was the bit about the transfer so now we're going to move on to doing the weathering all right with that done we're pretty much to the weathering and that's we'll leave that one for the last episode because that's pretty much going to finish it um walking through all that you know kind of gives you an idea of, of what I'm going through with it. Uh, again, not an expert, won't be an expert sharing my journey. Um, hopefully this is helpful for those who watch this and, and they find it, y'all can find this useful or at least moderately entertaining. Um, please, if you have suggestions, queries, whatever, feel free to put them down here in the comments below. I always read them. Um, as long as they're respectful and, and, and not insulting, I'm more than happy to engage and let's, let's talk. I'm, always learning so with that said thank you very much for watching i appreciate everybody who does and until next time happy modeling